sometimes you gotta go back over the areas you just cleaned because you got a difficult angle to work with. Be right back. Kill it, kill it, kill it. What's up everybody? I'm Tyler Rogan with Power Wash Academy. Today we're gonna to be washing the stucco home in Dallas, Texas. I wanted to give you a quick walk around and kind of teach you a little bit about our process, what we're gonna be doing. And I wanted to mention, I really appreciate you guys watching these videos. Please subscribe to our channel. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you wanna go ahead and hit the bell, that's gonna let you know when we've got a new video coming out and you'll be able to watch it right when it drops. So thanks again for watching guys, appreciate it very much. Let's take a walk around. I'm gonna show you what we're working with. Um, today, we've got a white stucco home. We've got a little bit of stone work that we're gonna be working with, but primarily the stucco is gonna be the cause for concern today. We're gonna be working with removing a few dirt dauber nests. Uh, we do have some organic growth in the back. Got some green and gray algae growing on the surface. Uh, we're gonna be working on some flat work, cleaning a driveway with our surface cleaner. I think we're gonna make a, a good day's work of it. So um, we're gonna have plants that we're gonna need to take care of, of course. We'll be soaking those thoroughly throughout our process to make sure our house wash doesn't cause any damages. I'd like to keep the customers happy and that keeps them calling us back. So all these extra precautions are well worth the work. Um, I'm looking at the house. We've got a couple spots, not uncommon to see bird droppings up here in between these two windows. So we'll give those a good soak. Hopefully those come off pretty easily. Um, every now and then on stucco, I might have to apply a little bit of pressure, but our main goal is to soft wash this whole thing. And I'll kind of show you a little bit, if we do use pressure to force some of the dirt or contaminants off of the surface, I'll show you how to do that safely. Uh, we've got painted garage doors, don't need to be too concerned with those. I will rinse those off beforehand just to avoid any streaking from our house wash mix. Uh, we've got some random spots up here on the stucco. Not exactly sure what that is, but I'm hoping it's an organic growth so we can spray it and rinse it and it'll go away. We do have a back patio uh, that we're gonna be washing off as well. Uh, we've got a flat screen TV, which these days is not uncommon to see. So we are in the process, wrapping it up, sealing it off so that we don't have to be concerned with toasting any electronics. Uh, we've got outlets in the back, of course, so we're gonna throw some Gorilla Tape on top of those, seal them off well. Uh, even if you've got a weatherproof uh, outlet cover, I still go ahead and tape those off because you don't wanna put your trust on that little tiny cheap piece of foam that comes with those things. So we'll tape them off, have a double layer of protection. We've got one more down here as well. Uh, as you can see, uh, this part of Texas, not uncommon to see a lot of these dirt dauber nests. Uh, that's what's left of one after we've kind of chipped the main part of it off. Uh, we'll soak those down and rinse them away. They should turn out well. As long as there's not a lot of clay in the soil from where they're getting their mud, uh, the stain should go away and shouldn't have anything left behind. Uh, this pool deck material um, seems to be in good shape. I like to inspect it pretty thoroughly before we get to running a surface cleaner on it in case it is starting to break down. You don't want that stuff to chip and crack and create a bigger issue than what we've already got. Um, got some random stains here. I'm most likely, I see a lot of times around pool decks, um, people with metal furniture on the, on the back patios will, the legs will start to get rust inside of them when they hold water. So when you move them around or they sit there for a while, you'll get all these little rusty spots. Uh, we will put some rust remover up plus on that and get those remedied. Not a big problem there. Um, Looking at the house, it's really not too bad. We've done this house a few times in the past and we have had it to where this entire wall has turned green. This time, fortunately, it's not quite as bad. They're kind of getting a little more of a preventative maintenance mode, which I had suggested to them in the past. And so that's gonna be more ideal for us. We're not gonna have to put on as strong of a batch of um, our house wash. And so that's easier for us as far as our concern for burning the plants with the house wash mix. I can see under this window, we've got a little bit of green growth there. So um, that will definitely um, clean up well. I think we're gonna go ahead and, and wash this one section of the roof. I did a walk around earlier and noticed that we do have a little bit of buildup on there. It's not quite as shiny and doesn't have the luster that it should. So I think while we're washing the house, I'll go ahead and do that small section of, of the metal roof. Um, I, well, I did notice one spot back here as well. Um, Probably don't get a lot of good air circulation in this little corner. 
and we don't get a lot of sun in that area so you can see all those little streaks of algae starting to grow they will clean up beautifully not a big deal uh, see this customer does have a couple maple trees around the property which are pretty darn sensitive to what we're working with so i'm gonna have one of my guys soaking these plants as i'm going around and we're gonna soak them beforehand as well but um, if you're cautious it's not a big deal if you're careless and in a rush you'll end up toasting some plants so take the time to do your preventative measures and take care of those plants Okay, looks pretty good. It's really not too dirty, so that's a good thing. We do have a little bit of splash up on the bottom of the stucco here. Uh, if the gutters are overflowing or you got a big downpour and it's splashing up there, getting all that dirt on the surface, uh, the dirt can be rinsed away. A lot of the time it does create a stain in the surface, so um, I always keep Rust Remover Plus on the truck. If that's the case, I can't rinse it off with water, I'll come back, put a light application, that should disappear in no time. Um, stucco tends to respond really well to Rust Remover Plus, as well as that pool deck material. It seems to lighten up the rust stains in a very short period of time. And so um, all of the surfaces we're working with are pretty ideal today as far as trying to get our best desired result. Um, we had a bunch of furniture on this back patio. We went ahead and moved everything out of the way here so that we don't splash on it or get any overspray landing on there. Sometimes we do rinse off the patio furniture if it's dusty and that really doesn't look that bad. So we went ahead and got it all the way out of the way and we'll put that back as we're completing this back part of the yard. But overall, I think that's about what we're working with. And I will, uh, I've already got a batch mixed up. We're gonna be putting about 3% um, sodium hypochlorite will be our mix. And we're of course, we're adding apple blossom, which will work great on this white surface to make sure that we're getting uh, even coverage around the house as we're spraying it on there and it smells good. Don't forget about that So let's walk back up to the front. I'm gonna double check Everything as far as my equipment is concerned. We'll fire up the machines and start spraying This driveway is getting pretty gross and so uh, first, we're going to go over with a surface cleaner. Uh, we're going to run about 3,000 PSI through that and uh, probably use hot water. It's not always necessary, but um, since it's not that big of an area, won't hurt to go ahead and turn on the heat just to make sure that it takes up everything. And if it doesn't totally get it the way I want it, uh, I'll put a little house wash mix on there and do a post treatment afterward. And uh, that'll avoid any, any streaking or any areas that aren't totally as bright as the rest. So um that is it okay i'll give you a quick walk around to show you what equipment we're going to be using today uh, as far as our soft wash system goes i've got a stallion unit here with the p40 pump puts out 11 gallons a minute so you can do a lot of quick cleaning with it i love that machine the honda motor they also make a version with a vanguard motor uh, both very good units uh, did a batch mix on this one uh, we've got a truck skid or a truck flatbed that we're working on. I'm just waiting on the new machine to come in. We'll mount it up and then we're going to switch over to the Sidewinder system. So I don't have to batch mix, save me a little bit of time and in uh, chemicals as well. So um, that's the uh, Comet Pump P40 on that unit. Uh, the surfactant we use, Apple Blossom, smells great, looks great, it's fun to use. So that's what we've got in there. Uh, up here we've got our new deluxe unit. This baby is putting out eight gallons a minute at 3,500 PSI. I love this thing, works very good. Uh, this one does have the clutch system on there, which is nice. I uh, won't see the immediate results until later on. Uh, that is put on there to help prolong the life of the pump. Whenever I let go of the trigger, the pump shuts off. The engine continues to run, but we're not having all that extra wear and tear on the pump. So as far as the hours are concerned on this thing, we'll get a lot more hours before we start needing to get into any sort of maintenance issues. But um, very good unit, very good setup, very fortunate to have nice equipment that makes my job easy and makes it easier, I'll put it that way, but it is fun to use when you've got nice equipment like this. So uh, I'm ready to fire up the machines and we're gonna get to washing. Okay, so we're ready to start washing this house. We've got Adrian soaking down the plants as we speak. And so um, we're gonna go ahead and start on this section. This is about as far as my hose is gonna reach. So we'll start here and work our way around the backyard and then come up, work on the front. 
and then the last will take this one section of the house that we couldn't get to. So um, those are nice and wet. Uh, I do have apple blossom in my mix. It's gonna take a second for that to cycle through my lines. So uh, it's gonna look clear at first, but you'll see when that apple blossom starts to come through in the mix and it'll be a, a better marker indicator for us. We did have some growth on the surface back here. And so that stays pretty shaded. Good spot for moisture to hang out. Okay. So I let the house wash set on the roof for about five to six minutes, give or take. Um, it didn't have a whole lot of buildup on there, so um, I didn't, didn't really need a lot of dwell time. Uh, if I applied my house wash mix on the roof and it were real dirty, I may have gone ahead and used my pressure washer to keep it damp, uh, just spray a mist up there and keep it from drying up. Uh, you don't want to let a house wash mix or a roof wash mix dry on a metal roof. Uh, if you get some of those streaks and the buildup from your house wash on there, they can be difficult to remove if they've dried on the surface. You know, these metal roofs get hot quick. And so uh, this morning, we're probably at about 80 degrees right now. So you don't have to worry about it flash drying, which flash drying is when you apply your house wash mix or anything for that matter, you put it on and the surface is hot so it starts to evaporate really quickly. And um, that can be a common challenge when you're doing house washes in the summertime. And so um, today we're fortunate, we've got a little overcast and um, it's a pretty ideal day for house washing. So I'm good with that. And uh, we let the, the house wash do its thing. I'm noticing some of those, the few amount of algae streaks that were growing on the surface, I've noticed that they have disappeared. And so that's a good indicator that it's time for me to rinse. Uh, I do want to do a thorough rinse on the windows. Same goes for those. If your surfactant dries on there or the, the sodium hypochlorite also, either, either one of those dry on the surface, then they're going to leave streaky windows, which they're not going to be totally spotless anyway, because we have hard water, but uh, we want to try and avoid any of that streaking as much as possible. You know, I do suggest having the windows washed after we're done with our house wash if they want it looking perfect. But if they don't want to opt for a window washing, then I like to go ahead and just make sure I've done my part and rinsed it off as well as I possibly could have. And so I think we're doing pretty good. About done rinsing this area that I soaked back here. And so, um, it's time to rinse these plants off once more. Just rinsing the house, it would possibly cause some of your house wash to splash up on the leaves of these trees. So I'll switch over to a soft wash tip here in just a second and get those soaking once more as I'm gonna start working around the rest of the house. I can notice some of my soap sudsing up on there and on darker surfaces a lot of the time after everything dries, you'll see these drip marks that have dried on the surface, little white dots. And so I'm gonna try to get as much of that rinsed off as possible. Uh, it looks pretty good. With the exception of a couple spots on these little vents, I try to be careful if I'm spraying up in there, there's not much blocking. You know, it's designed for airflow to come in and out easily. And so I don't wanna hammer down on those gaps, you know, in the vents and cause a bunch of excess moisture to get inside of the, the attic. And so I feel pretty good about that rinse off. Probably give it a one more once over. Maybe two, maybe three, whatever it takes. And so as I'm washing, I can see one little spot that this didn't look that dirty to begin with, but I'm noticing that my house wash mix didn't totally cover this area here. So I can see a little darker spot. So it lets me know I need to touch up that area. And overall, 
um, we got a pretty good bit of coverage. And so I'll come back and hit that real quick. Can you hit me that soft wash gun? Just go. You can use that to go around the borders. Um, around this flower bed, we've got um, some, some green algae growing on that surface. And instead of me using my soft wash system to soak all that down, I'll use this little pump up sprayer and that will allow me to just spray a more even smaller stream on that and be able to clean that up without using this big soft wash and you know putting out 10 11 gallons a minute is a little excessive for a small border like that okay little touch up there is all i needed so i've got a technician soaking down this wooden table over here now the customer asked if we could avoid moving it if at all possible she would appreciate it so that's what we're going to do we're going to work around it so my house wash is probably going to get on it to some extent but i'd like to just it may be sealed it may not and so uh, don't take any chances i'll soak it down like i would a fence or anything else that i'm working around and then uh, we can just work around that i'll surface clean it if we do need to move it i'll just move it over a little bit wash and then move it back into place instead of moving it all the way out in the yard the top cap of that chimney see how half of it's still gray okay, yeah. so it didn't look that bad when we first got started it wasn't noticeable but now when it actually looks clean we can know what it's supposed to look like So I'm using my soft wash tip with an open dual lance and that's giving me low pressure so I can get relatively close to these dirt dauber nests with my gun and I don't have to worry about damaging the surface. It's going to take off as much as I can that way, come back with a brush in a few minutes and agitate those loose. Okay, all that streaking that was on the side has disappeared so feel like it's a good time for a rinse go ahead and start with the roof keep it wet I'll just keep it wet if I can't get to the roof to rinse it off immediately that's okay I just want to make sure it doesn't dry on the surface so I'm just gonna give it a quick once over maintain a little moisture on there and I've got a couple of spots that aren't gonna totally go away which are up here on the side looks like something may have touched it or scuff the surface it might have been a repair that they had made but sometimes you'll get a few inconsistencies that uh, can't necessarily tell what that is it looks like actually a patch job so they may have had some hail damage or who knows what right there but those spots don't totally blend in but they are clean Right now I'm spraying the chimney down. Had to get over to this other side and give it a soaking, spray over the roof. So that being said, I may end up back in the other part of the yard where we were a second ago and rinse that roof off once more. But sometimes you gotta go back over the areas you just cleaned because you got a difficult angle to work with. Be right back. Kill it, kill it, kill it. I'm renting down my trailer right now. I was running my soft wash gun and I noticed all, I lost all my pressure. And it's not uncommon to rupture a hose every now and then. You always gotta check your lines. If you ever notice any bulging areas in, your, in any of your lines for that matter, you need to go ahead and take the time and cut that part off and fix it. So I'm gonna rinse this down real quick and I'll show you exactly what happened. Noticed I lost all my pressure at my soft wash gun. 
So I knew it wasn't out of gas. And if you're running out of chemical, it'll start to sputter a little bit, you know, gradually lose pressure. But I lost all my pressure. So dropped what I was doing, ran back over here and noticed a cascade of house wash mix going into the air. Not ideal, but it happens. So um, basically came over here, noticed that where my pressure line comes into my hose reel was the culprit. So um, basically a lot of pressure is building here. It was causing this little area right here to flex. And where's that little piece of hose at? And so basically I, I, I pulled it off and cut it off, but this is what happened. I had my hose clamp right here. It ruptured right there. And so um, I hadn't noticed that the line was bulging right there, but it probably was. So it's not a bad idea when you start up your machine just to go around and look at all of your connections because sometimes you'll have a connection that slides off. Sometimes you'll have a, a rupture in the line itself. And that can be a big problem depending on where that happens. And so um, whenever you're putting a new hose on a line and you put these, uh, these clamps down, Tighten them down, you know, as well as you can without without damaging the clamp. But then uh, and come back, you know, maybe the next day or so, and cinch all those back down again because the hose will, the rubber on the hose or plastic will collapse a little bit, and or it'll be, it'll be compressed a little bit under that clamp, and then that will give it a little bit of wiggle room. So either the, uh, the hose can pop off again and spray all over the place. Um, you know, there's several things that can happen with these hoses. So always check your connections. And um, now's a good time since I just had a problem with that one. This is a relatively new hose, but this machine cranks out a lot of pressure and I left it idling for a long time. So it was constantly leaving pressure in this line, except for whenever I'd pull my trigger that it would drop back down. So um, need to check this, it looks like I don't see any other spots that would be potentially risky right now. Everything else looks pretty good. That was a total random occurrence, but it does happen. So be prepared for that kind of stuff. If you ever drop pressure in your soft wash gun, stop what you're doing and get over here immediately because luckily this kind of sprayed mainly on my trailer and somewhat in the street. So I can rinse all of this off. But if you're parked, say if I would have been parked in the driveway, that would have ran all over the grass and that could have been a big problem. So we're fortunate that this worked out the way that it did. One other thing I wanted to mention, I use my pressure washer to wa wash off my equipment and my trailer and everything, but um, that's pretty good. I'm sure I got the bulk of it off. I've got this pump up sprayer with my PM, took the label off of this, but this is PM from powerwash.com. It's a bleach neutralizer. And so um, I keep a pump up sprayer with handy at all times. And so uh, if I get, on some plants that I can't necessarily run the pressure washer over or something happens, you know, you know, I get overspray on my trailer, my equipment, anything. I've got this pump up sprayer and I can just pretty much spray everything up here. And if there's any bleach that I didn't totally rinse off, then this should neutralize it pretty well and be less of a problem. I wasn't quite as mindful of this when I started using this trailer and I've been through a few. They eventually start to rust here and there and then it, uh, after a few years, it grows, rust is on everything. And so um, now that I've started using this PM um, after my jobs, I'm anticipating that it's gonna prolong the life of my equipment. Um, that new flatbed truck that we've built, I need to take very good care of it because I need it to last a long time and keep it looking nice, keep it in good working order and I feel like that one little once over at this stuff is a very inexpensive preventative maintenance chemical. Okay, there's that. Now we can get back to what we're here for. Let's wash the house. Thank you, my friend. Okay. Okay, so not a whole lot got on this side of the metal roof when I was shooting up to get the other side of that chimney, so that's good. I'm just gonna finish rinsing this one side and we'll leave our hoses run here to the backyard because we're gonna do some surface cleaning. So I'll rinse this spot off that we have soft washed and then we can get on running that surface cleaner, work our way around to the front of the house. So I mentioned in the past that I like to use this DN10 valve. 
I don't want to run all the way around to the front of the house to turn off my machine to hook up the surface cleaner. So a uh, quick turn of the knob and I can hook up and keep working. Okay, so these little squares that I'm surface cleaning off, um, it can be tricky to get the edges in the corners. Uh, it takes a little practice, but basically I'll use the motion I'll be using is I'll go and I'll overlap these corners just a bit, but like I say it takes some practice before you're pretty good at it, but I can move quickly and uh, run my surface cleaner to clean this whole thing, all the corners and everything. Um, if you want to be more, you got to be very careful not to run your surface cleaner off the edge and hit the spray bar into there. If you bend that, then um, you've got issues to deal with. So um, you can clean it with the wand if you're not comfortable doing that, but um, I'll show you kind of how I go over these corners. That's another little thing I like to do. The pressure from this thing, this isn't a floating surface cleaner. It's got wheels on it. It's a little bit heavier. And so, but if I'm trying to pick it up and carry it off of a curb or carry it through the yard or something like that, I like to keep it running. Those jets on the bottom or the nozzles on the bottom are helping lift it up somewhat. And so I'm still carrying it, but I can carry it very easily. I'm not having to support the whole weight of this thing. So if I need to carry it, it's not too bad. Whereas I drop it, you know, I'm having to support all the weight of it. So. Um, that is one thing I like to do if I'm trying to carry it over a gap or a curb or something. Watched our last video I mentioned about working around these pool covers this is kind of a tight area and so I couldn't totally keep my wheels on the top of this thing but when I was working around it I kept the surface cleaner tilted up so if it did pull it up out of there it's not stuck underneath there it actually lifted it up and tossed it out to the side which is what I was hoping would happen if that were to come loose All right, so I'm pretty good at the surface cleaning here. I'm gonna come back with the wand and touch up around a couple little spots like under this table. And I'm going to spray a little bit out of our backpack sprayer around the trim of this pool. It's got a little bit of growth that didn't come off with the surface cleaner. And so I'll come through, rinse, and then put an application down. Uh, okay. So what I'm gonna to try to do now is push this dirty water that way. Since I've already rinsed this off, I'm hoping I don't have to rinse it again. So what I'm gonna do is, well, looks like I'm rinsing it again. That roof looks quite a bit better over there now. All of our streaks are gone. Feeling pretty good. So now we'll just come through with the brush and agitate these spots where the dirt dauber's nests are. Hopefully we can lift those up a little bit. Pretty sure we should be able to. Um, we'll find out whenever we start scrubbing it, but I'll leave the gun back here for a second. So when we scrub it, we can rinse it again. Uh, we have scrubbed the dirt dauber nest by hand and they did come up most of the way. There's a couple little spots where you can still see a little bit of residue on there. 
And so uh, I would say it's about 90% of the way up, maybe 95, but um, it's pretty acceptable, pretty common for it to end up that way. Uh, I'm gonna try one little trick with some rust remover plus and see if that might loosen it up just a little bit and address those stains. We should be able to get them all the way out a lot of the time, but there are times that it doesn't totally come out of the way. And so we'll have him bring that back here, give that a quick shot and a rinse, and we'll be moving to the front of the house. And I've used this to remove clay staining on stucco before, and I've found that spraying it on and not necessarily letting it dry 100% seems to work a little bit better. I'll come in with, with enough pressure to break it loose, but not enough to damage the surface. So it doesn't work every single time, but it's definitely worth a shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this today. It worked. So since that's working, we're gonna go ahead and go through and do the rest of these. All it takes is a little spritz. See what a difference that makes? It's awesome. When I'm spraying around an electrical box like that, I try to be very brief with my application. I don't want a bunch of that running down behind that thing. Most of the time they're sealed off well, but I've seen people online toasting those things. High voltage. It's my understanding that this SH is more conductive than water. I don't know that as a fact, but that's what I've heard, so I'll just play it safe and think it is what it is. So I'm using a little Rust Remover Plus um, to loosen up some of these stains. Kids play back here, balls bounce off of the wall, they're putting their dirty little hands on it, it makes marks, which house wash mix doesn't remove that on its own and um, you know you can only put so much pressure on it so i've found and i don't exactly know how or why it works but the rust remover plus is good if you need to spot check a couple little spots on stucco i'll put it on let it dwell for a minute or maybe two and it loosens it up it loosens it up enough so that i can come through with just a little more pressure and and it rinses off easily so I do a lot of white stucco homes and I figured this out when I was doing rust uh, or clay stain removal. Um, I was going the slow process, apply, let it dwell, let it dry, rinse, and um, I ended up having one spot that I applied and I needed to rinse it off and I washed it off while it was still wet and the stuff came right off of there. I wasn't waiting for it to change color. It just loosened it up enough to where I could wash it off. So. Um, like I say, I was lucky to have found that out, but now one more thing to put into the bag of tricks. The mix in this is one gallon of Rust Remover Plus and a half a gallon of water. So um, pretty, pretty general mix for using Rust Remover Plus. Can I get that white tip, Adrian? I'll try this one first. So that spot right here, this is actually, it looks like might have been a might have been a patch that they had made, a little bit of patchwork. You can see we've got some cracks coming through here, so they may have had some issues, I'm not sure, but that is a totally different color. Let me go ahead and get that white tip. So I'm gonna put a white tip on here just 
for the spray pattern. I'm not going to use the white tip for high pressure because I'm going to open up my dual lens one, but um, the white tip, I like the, the shape of that spray. It's a little more direct, but I'll open it up with my dual lens all the way open, then I can get up a little bit closer with it. So a good majority of that came off. Not quite 100%, but definitely noticeable, noticeably better. And I found on stucco, if you still see a slight bit of discoloration on there, if it's not real major, by the time it dries, it won't be noticeable. So um, that's what we're shooting for. So all these spots here, the lady said her kids play basketball back here. So this basketball is dirty. It's always hitting that wall. I don't expect house wash mix to remove that. Uh, so I'll just come through. Give it a quick spritz. I'll let that set for a minute or two. I mean, you can let it set longer if you need to, but either it's coming off or it's not. So, I mean, usually about two minutes is, is totally sufficient. Okay, so now I've washed and rinsed this back side of the house and I am noticing uh, once it's wet, it's a little more reflective on the surface so I can see, but we've got a crack going through the stucco here on the middle. In fact, there's a few cracks. And so we obviously didn't cause that, but it's a good service for the customer if you do notice anything like that, point it out to them later so that uh, in the future, it's not creating a more expensive repair for the customer. but. We will mention that, you know, if, if it gets much worse, then it'll probably start flaking off of there. And so I'll just give her a heads up and she can keep it in mind. It may or may not fix it, but I tried. We are about three quarters of the way done with the house. We went through 55 gallons of a batch mix. So we're gonna make up a half batch to finish off the rest of the house. And that should be good. Okay, so we are mixing up our half batch that we're going to use to finish the rest of this house wash. Uh, the first batch that we mixed, I made the batch, put my apple blossom in. It sat in there for probably 45 minutes, if not more, before I actually got the washing. So the dye um, was no more. So you saw me washing that back part of it and the color marking dye was no longer there. And so it's a good idea to put that in at the very end when you're ready to start washing. And so uh, between all the prep work and everything else, it just sat there too long. It's still a great surfactant and it still smells good, but the pink part wasn't there anymore. So for the rest of the house wash, it should be nice and pink. And I think that it'll be a little more fun, I guess we would say. It's more fun, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's, uh, let's paint this house pink. There's the pink. All right, the pink's showing up now, so party time. Will you soak that fence for me? So we've got a wood fence here. The sealer's starting to look a little aged, so uh, Danny's soaking it down real well, and it'll absorb uh, the water, and that away when our house wash gets on it, less likely for it to leave any light marks where the house wash goes and so a um, little extra precaution
Okay, so I've got one little dirt dauber nest that I was trying to knock down. Well, it was already down and we scrubbed it. We still have a little mark left behind. So you can see up here, it looks pretty good, but really to put the finishing touch on it, I'll put a little rust remover on there. Let that set for just a minute to loosen it up. Um, plants are rinsed, front of the house is washed, we can move around to the back, we're in the home stretch now. Okay, I knocked that loose dirt off of the surface from the rain splash up and I can see that we still do have a little discoloration so come through real quick, same mix of this little spritz of this stuff should brighten it right up I used to think you had to have a dry surface but a lot of rust stains will actually come out when you apply this stuff and it's still wet so we'll let that rest for just a second and if somebody will soak that side of the fence we're gonna go ahead and start washing this back Last little home stretch. In fact, let me see that real quick before you do that. Let's see if we need to let it dwell or we can get it off of there now. Okay, so it's doing what I thought. You can see how it's still brown down here. That was only on there for a couple of seconds and melting right off of there. Okay, we've washed the house. I think it's about time we get started on the flat work so we can take a lunch break. What do you think, guys? Yes, yep, all right, I think it's almost lunchtime then. We're gonna pull these hoses back around to the front, uh, get our surface cleaner, kick on the heat, and we'll start working on the driveway. All right, now that the house wash is done, the last bit we need to do is the flat work. Uh, we're gonna do the driveway here and I'm gonna be using my surface cleaner with heat. I typically don't set my heat above 160 degrees. Uh, it can be hard on the bearings and they're not a cheap part to replace, so I try to take care of those when I can. I will a lot of times go with no heat on the surface cleaner. Um, if you got a good powerful, powerful machine with moving a lot of water, uh, it has a lot of cleaning power, but uh, today I am gonna use the heat because some of the buildup on here is pretty black and pretty heavy, so. Uh, I'm going to give it all I've got and I'm going to start pretty much right here in the middle of the driveway, kind of divide it up into two sections. I'll get at this, this point, it uh, goes downhill from some point, starting here at the top. And so that's one of the reasons I'm starting in the middle is because I want my water to run downhill. I don't really want to work on a low spot and keep working my way uphill and all that dirty water keeps running over my clean area. And so. It just makes it easier for me to see my line where I've passed and it just is a little better for rinsing. If, I've, if I'm working my way down, the water's running downhill as I'm working, so it's kind of rinsing away for me. I'll definitely have to come back with a, with a rinse after I'm done, but if you start at the top and work your way to the lowest point of the area you'll be surface cleaning, it will be an easier rinse for you. And I'm going to, uh, when I'm running a surface cleaner, I like to make the long, as long paths as I would, as I can. So in this case, I'm gonna go all the way to the end and come all the way back up and back and forth. And in that, the amount of times that I have to pivot and turn around to go back in the other direction is gonna be a lot less than if I were going side to side, one, two, three, four. Uh, it's just gonna be a little bit of a time saver. And I just feel like it makes more sense to go one long stretch versus chopping it up into a million little bits over and over. All right, if we could, drum roll please, with heat.
walking a certain speed to give me the most effective cleaning power. If I walk too fast with this thing, it's going to leave stripes. If I walk too slow, I'm wasting my time. So I'll find a good speed that's giving me a good, consistent cleaning. And I can make my best time. Dirtier driveways, i found you have to go a little bit slower. Either that or go over it twice. Most of the time, I'd rather just walk slower and get it done on the first pass. Whenever I'm going with my surface cleaner, I give it a tiny bit of overlap from the first pass that I made. I'm coming up, I don't want it to be real big, but I do want to overlap somewhat. If I accidentally miss a spot, like this, I'm not going to turn around and start moving my surface cleaner around trying to go back and touch up that one little spot. I'll just wait till I come back with my wand, and then I'll touch up that spot with the wand. If you start trying to backtrack with your surface cleaner, you're going to make an inconsistent path. It might end up looking weird. This is a good example right here. You can see in this area right here, we've got these swirl marks. I've got more buildup on this area of the driveway, and so I need to slow it down a little bit. And you can see that I've got a few of these marks here. i have going the same speed I have been on the rest of the driveway, but in that thicker buildup, it takes a little more to get it up. So I'll have to slow down in those areas. And it makes the same mark, you know, on a thing that's on a driveway or sidewalk that's not this dirty, you'll still get those stripes if you're going too fast. So uh, just if you if you notice you're doing that, take a step back, slow yourself down just a little bit, and then you can you can correct it. And if it's just one small patch of stripes before I notice it, I'll just keep going, and then I'll come back with my wand and touch that up. I don't necessarily need to stop and go back up and run it back over with my surface cleaner. Um, you can touch it up with the wand, so. Okay guys, I think we are about done with our house washing for the day. Uh, I'm doing a little walkthrough in the backyard here to make sure there's nothing we need to touch up before we go. Everything that we've cleaned is as I would have hoped it would turn out. So that area of the roof that we cleaned, it's got its uh, luster back. So we've got a nice shiny surface. Um, all of our algae streaks behind the trees on this side and up above the patio. They're all gone, and we got the dirt dauber nest out of the way, got everything surface cleaned and rinsed. I have a feeling the customer's gonna be happy. And so, uh, appreciate you guys following along with us. If you like what we showed you today, hit the like button. Please follow our channel and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to be alerted every time we drop a new video. Appreciate you guys watching. Have a great day.